Once the measurements and calculations are done, you know whether or not a mechanical ventilation system is required. The next step is to design the system. There are a lot of options to consider to ensure that this system will work well for the occupants. ASHRAE 62.2 allows a wide variety of approaches to provide air exchange in the building. The system can provide the air exchange using exhaust fans, supply fans, or a combination of both. It must be designed for automatic operation, meaning it must run without the need for the occupants to regularly turn it on and off with a switch. And the system can either run continuously or intermittently, automatically turning itself on and off as long as the average air exchange rate meets the calculated requirement. When a system needs to be installed, there are two main decisions to make. The first one is what kind of system will it be? Exhaust only, supply only, or a balanced combination of the two? The second decision is what type of control method will be used? Will the fan be sized to provide exactly the desired flow rate and run continuously? Or will the fan be oversized and then either cycled on and off to get the correct average rate or run at a reduced speed to provide the desired rate? These are important decisions and the rest of this lesson will describe some of the practical considerations related to the possible options. Exhaust only systems use one or more fans to remove stale air from the building. They depressurize the building so fresh air enters through leaks in the envelope. These can be local fans that pull air out of a single space, or they can be fans that draw from multiple spaces. Supply-only systems use one or more fans to push fresh air into the building. They pressurize the space so stale air is pushed out through leaks in the envelope. These may use the air handler fan to draw air in through a fresh air intake, or they may use dedicated fans. Balanced systems use a balanced combination of supply and exhaust fans. The supply fans bring in the same amount of air that the exhaust fans pull out, so no pressures are created in the house by them. This can be done with separate fans, but when there are two air streams, it's possible to move heat and moisture from one stream to the other, improving energy use and comfort. We call these devices HRVs and ERVs, heat recovery ventilators and energy recovery ventilators. Exhaust only ventilation is by far the most common strategy. As you can see from the diagram, as the fan pulls the stale air out of the house, it creates negative pressure. Wherever there are openings in the envelope, fresh outdoor air is pulled in. This strategy is usually accomplished with a bath fan, which then serves as both local exhaust and whole building ventilation. In some cases, it can be done with an existing fan, but these are often not designed to run continuously. A new Energy Star labeled fan is a better choice, since it'll be quieter, use less electricity, and be designed for continuous operation. These fans often have a higher flow rate than is required by the calculations. But that's good, since we want them to have a high flow rate when they're being used as local exhaust fans to remove moisture when someone is taking a shower. But in this case, they have two applications. They need to provide that high flow for local exhaust and lower flow for whole building exhaust. The low flow can be accomplished by a control system that either cycles the fan off and on regularly or turns down the speed of the fan. Some fans are available with integral ventilation controls. With other fans, the switch must be replaced by a specialized controller. We'll come back to this later in the lesson. This method is the most affordable option, but it has a few drawbacks. One is that there is an energy penalty associated with removing conditioned air and bringing in unconditioned air. Another is that the fresh air that enters may introduce unwanted moisture into building cavities, especially in warm, humid climates. And the last is that it ventilates the spaces around that bathroom very well, but it doesn't ventilate rooms that are far away very effectively. One way to improve the effectiveness of exhaust-only systems is to use multiple fans in different locations of the house. They can be set up so the total flow rate meets the calculated ventilation requirement. Of course, this setup is about twice as expensive to install. Another way to accomplish the same goal is to install an inline fan with multiple inlets to draw air from multiple locations in the house. Supply-only ventilation is another strategy. 
As you can see from the diagram, as the fan pushes fresh air into the house, it creates positive pressure. Wherever there are openings in the envelope, stale indoor air is pushed out. This could be done with a wall or attic mounted fan, but there are some issues with this approach. One is that house air is pushed into building cavities where it might cause problems, especially in cold climates. The other is that in the winter, cold outdoor air is introduced into just a few locations where it's likely to cause comfort issues. So this approach is rarely used. A more commonly used approach to supply only ventilation is to add an outdoor air intake to the return stream of a ducted system. Here's a drawing of a typical arrangement. This system has several advantages. First, it uses an existing fan, the one in the air handler, and it distributes the fresh air all through the house through the duct system. And it provides the potential to heat and cool the fresh air when necessary to ensure occupant comfort. These systems are very common in commercial buildings, but they're also installed in some houses. One drawback to this system is that if all that's done is to install the fresh air intake duct, the only time fresh air is introduced is when heating and cooling is needed. For the system to work properly, the air handler must cycle on and off regularly, 365 days a year. An optimal system includes a motorized damper to only open the intake when needed. The duct should be sized to get just the right amount of airflow, and there should be a controller that turns the system on and off regularly. Balanced ventilation is the third possible strategy. As you can see from the diagram, two fans are present. One draws stale air out of the house and the other pushes fresh air in. Since the two fans have matching flow rates, no pressure is created in the house. If the supply and exhaust are at opposite ends of the house, the fresh air distribution should be fairly uniform. A balanced system provides the possibility of exchanging heat and moisture between the incoming and outgoing air streams. This can be very beneficial because it saves energy and it tempers the incoming fresh air, making the system more comfortable. This is typically done with a pre-designed all-in-one system. The diagram shows how it works. The fresh air comes in on one side and the exhaust air comes in on the other. A heat exchanger separates the streams so they don't mix, but it allows heat to move from one stream to the other. If this heat exchanger is made of metal or plastic, we call it a heat recovery ventilator or HRV. It only transfers heat through it. But if the heat exchanger is made of a material that wicks water, like dense paper, it will transfer moisture in addition to heat. We call that an energy recovery ventilator or ERV. I'm sure you can understand the value of drying out the incoming air on a humid summer day or adding moisture to the incoming air on a cold winter day. For these reasons, balanced ventilation is the most preferable option, but it's also the most expensive and complicated to install. Here's what one of these systems might look like when it's installed in a house. As you might imagine, there's a wide variety of ways one of these recovery ventilators can be installed. They can have dedicated ducting like this diagram shows. The exhaust air comes from the hall and common areas and the supply goes to the bedrooms. This approach ensures good distribution of the fresh air, but it might result in some comfort issues in the bedrooms. The heat exchange isn't 100% efficient, it's more like 60 to 70% efficient. So the fresh air will be a little cooler than the room air in winter and warmer in the summer. Here's another common approach. The recovery ventilator uses the supply ductwork for the heating and cooling system to deliver fresh air to the rooms. This reduces the installation cost somewhat and it provides great distribution for the air. The exhaust ductwork is dedicated though in this diagram. It could also be integrated into the heating and cooling system return. Either way, the recovery unit needs to know when the air handler is running so it can shut down and close a damper to isolate itself. Otherwise, the various fans would compete with each other and air would start flowing in unintended directions. As you can see, there are a lot of ventilation system options. Hopefully this summary will give you a good framework to start doing research for your projects. Any air intakes into supply only or balanced systems must be installed in locations that avoid obstructions like snow or plants. And they must be kept suitable distances from sources of contaminants like exhaust outlets and combustion appliance vents. Here are the instructions from an HRV and ERV installation manual.
the ASHRAE requirements are even more restrictive. Take a look at section 6.8 for more details. If you install a fan that's sized to provide just the right amount of fresh air, you can just hardwire it in and have it run continuously. But often the fan has a higher capacity than the calculated flow rate. In that case, you need to provide a means for the occupants to reduce the rate. And even if the fan is theoretically sized perfectly, the occupants may still want to turn it down. Maybe they aren't home very often and they don't cook very much, so they don't need that much fresh air. For these reasons, most systems include some kind of control system that can reduce the average delivered flow rate. We can do that by either reducing the fan speed or by cycling the fan on and off at regular intervals. In addition, some systems like HRVs or fresh air intakes and deducted systems require more advanced controls to open and close dampers and turn air handlers on and off. My personal belief is that the first priority should always be to keep the controls as simple as possible. I often find control systems in both commercial and residential buildings that nobody knows how to use. If the homeowner has a hard time understanding when their filter is dirty and how to change it, will they remember how to use a high-tech ventilation control? No system will serve its intended purpose if the user gets frustrated and sets it incorrectly or even shuts it down. I think the best way to control a bath fan is with a speed controller. If you turn the speed down, the fan gets quieter and you can run it continuously. Some fans have speed controls built right in. You turn the CFM dial to the desired continuous rate, and when someone's using the bathroom, it ramps up to full speed, either using a light switch, occupancy sensor, or humidity sensor as a trigger. This is what I installed in my house with an occupancy sensor. Another option is the air track control pictured on the right. It takes a bit of work to get it set up to the desired speed, so it goes against my keep it simple recommendation, but it's the only controller I've found that will reduce the fan speed. Once it's set up and the cover plate's installed, the only function of the exposed switch is to boost the fan to full speed for a preset period. After that, it drops back to the continuous speed. And that switch can also serve as a light control. The internal battery retains the settings for many years, even through power failures. And the settings can't be tampered with without removing the cover plate. All of the other external controllers I've seen run the fan at full speed, but cycle it off and on, usually for an adjustable number of minutes every hour. If you need 30 CFM, but the fan runs at 90, then it only needs to run a third of the time, or 20 minutes every hour. Here are two examples. The smart exhaust is nice because the settings consist of only two dials. One is for the minutes per hour of runtime, and the other is for the high speed runtime when the bathroom is used. I installed this one in my last house and it worked great. The other one allows day by day programming and it's often available at big box home stores, but like programmable thermostats, it can be challenging for our occupants to use. Controls for fresh air intakes and deducted systems are more complicated. They may cycle the air handler on at full speed, or they may cycle it using a lower speed tap for ventilation. With some new variable speed systems, they may electronically reduce the fan speed to a very low level so it's quiet and energy efficient. Numerous controls are available, some are add-ons, and some are made by the air handler manufacturers for easier integration with the heating and cooling controls. ASHRAE 62.2 specifically allows the use of the thermostat fan on switch as a means for the occupants to control the system, as long as its function is clearly labeled. Requirements for determining the appropriate on time for the fan are detailed in ASHRAE 62.2. It depends on three factors, the desired ventilation rate, the capacity of the fan, and how often the fan will turn on. As long as the fan turns on at least once every three hours, the equation is pretty straightforward. Simply divide the desired average flow by the fan capacity and multiply by 60. That will tell you how many minutes every hour the fan must run. Let's do that calculation for our example house from two lessons ago. We calculated that it needs 29 CFM of ventilation. If we install a fan that delivers 72 CFM, then the necessary runtime is 29 divided by 72 times 60. The result is that the fan needs to run 24 minutes out of every hour. 
If the fan runs less frequently than every three hours, its effectiveness at ventilating the house is reduced, so it needs to run longer when it's activated. There's a formula for determining the runtime, but it's not used very often in small residential buildings since most of the systems installed in them turn on once per hour or run continuously. If you need to use this calculation, you can find it in section 4.5.2 of ASHRAE 62-2013. So now you may be wondering how to decide which system is right for your customers. Well, it depends. The location of the house is important. Because of potential moisture issues, exhaust-only systems are better than supply-only systems in cold climates, but the opposite is true in warm, humid climates. Another consideration is the amount of ventilation needed. If it's really high, an HRV may make sense to reduce the energy penalty. If the house is big, a system with multiple supplies or intakes probably makes sense to ensure that the whole thing gets fresh air. But if it's small and the floor plan is very open, then a single supply or intake will probably be adequate. Of course, you have to consider the available budget. And finally, think about the controls and whether the specific customer will be willing and able to understand and use them. That's a lot to think about, but if you design the system well, it will provide the customer with healthy air for a long time.